Hi, my name is Frank Kutka. This video is going to be how to maintain your own varieties of open pollinated corn using hand pollination. Normally we use open pollination where the wind blows the, the pollen where it will and makes seeds and we can uh, save seeds and replant our corn. But in certain situations, uh, such as mine here in town where we have a lot of different varieties in different gardens, uh, I don't know what pollen's blowing on the wind. So I use hand pollination in order to maintain my original seed stock. This video is going to show how to do that using uh, pollinating bags, stapler, a knife, and very simple techniques. This is a good strong plant. You can see from the tassel all the way down to the roots. It's an excellent example of what this variety has to offer. Uh, when we're going to do an open pollinated uh, variety this way, uh, keeping it by chain sibbing, we're going to want to grow several hundred individuals if possible and only intermate the very best looking plants and throw off all of the strange off types that sometimes will show up in some populations. At the end we'd like to have at least a hundred ears maintained to keep the genetic diversity pretty much as it was when we found it. The ear shoot is the female flower of the corn. You can see here the silks. These are the parts upon which the pollen is going to land and uh, allow fertilization of the seeds. Uh, an ear shoot that looks like this with silks out is one that uh, we can no longer use for hand pollination because it's already been exposed to the pollen that's flying. So what we're going to look for are ear shoots that are exposed but uh, no, don't have any silk showing yet. On top of a corn stalk we'll find the tassel. This is the male flower and you can see this one here has lots of little anthers showing. Uh, this one will probably be shedding shortly. Here's an ear shoot that's just about in perfect condition. You can see that it's, it's uh, sticking up well beyond the leaf sheath and it's something that we can easily get a, a shoot bag on. I like to use Lawson 217s. And here's how I wrap this. Seeing that there's no uh, silk showing, which would be a no-no, I'm going to take the leaf blade and snap it off like that so it's just out of my way. And then uh, since I'd like this to stay wedged even if we have high winds, I'm going to take this bag upside down and just split the leaf sheath slightly, turn it around, and then there's the long end of the bag that slides down in between the ear sh shoot into the sheath and between the ear shoot and the stalk. And that should uh, stay wedged there very, very well. As we've gone along, we've been uh, covering the ear shoots as they developed and eventually we'll start to see silks form inside the bag like you can see here. Uh, an ear shoot like this is ready to pollinate and so what I'll do the night before is set up tassels that look like they're also ready, uh, bag those up, and the following morning I will make pollinations after the pollen starts to shed, fresh. Usually after 8 o'clock uh, and probably before noon when it starts to get warm. As I check uh, ears for silking in the evening and set up tassels, sometimes I'll trim silks. And so I use just a simple uh, paring knife and here's a uh, shoot bag. I've got some silk inside. Now sometimes the silks will come out and some will be longer, some will be shorter. Uh, sometimes it's nice to have a nice even surface so that all of the uh, silks get pollinated. And so uh, some of us uh, will trim and this is what we do. Um, these are now exposed but you can see there's some there. There'll be some new silks coming yet tomorrow. And what I'm going to do is cut back into the uh, husks just a little bit to expose some silks like so. It leaves a, uh, a small round of exposed silk. Now this cut surface isn't going to get pollinated so right now this ear's okay. And what I'm going to do is put the bag back on, wedge it back down, and I'm going to fold over the top slightly to indicate to me that this one will be ready tomorrow morning uh, when I want to pollinate. And now I will go and set up a tassel for this particular ear shoot and in the morning I should see uh, silks that are a quarter to a half an inch long, nice and neat, and easily pollinated. This is a good tassel that's ready to set up. I'll uh, set this one up for an ear that's uh, showing some silks for tomorrow. 
we can see there's some anthers have already been opening and there are a lot of unopened florets ready to go. What I'm going to do is cover this up with a Lawson 402 tassel bag, like so, and then I'm going to fold that around tightly against the stock, like so, which makes a very tight seal, and then I'm going to hold it on with a jumbo non-skid paper clip. Almost never fails. Uh, some people like to use staples. I don't like those because then you have to rip the bags off and uh, it's not hard to cut yourself on the half open staples. But the paper clip method works very well. I've uh, rarely seen these blow off even in hard wind. Um, if you're in a place that's especially windy you can put the bag on so that uh, it has a lower profile facing the wind. But in most locations this will be just great. And again we'll set one tassel up for each of the ear shoots we see that's showing silk and ready in the morning. Here's a tassel that I bagged last night and here's how I'm going to get some pollen from it. I'm going to grab the base of the tassel firmly in one hand and then I'm going to wrap the bag and the tassel inside it against my other hand like so. And I'm going to remove the paper clip and this is why this technique is so awesome. Very easy to do. Now I'm going to open the bag slightly and shake this tassel and slowly take it out and take the bag and close it up. You can see this tassel is covered in anthers. There's a lot of pollen in this bag. There's still a lot of pollen flying. Now I'm going to take this bag like so and take it to another plant which I have found uh, has some silks ready for it. This one's already been uh, pollinated. I will take this pollen to a plant that was not the male for this one. So I'm forming a chain. One plant is male to another plant is female. That same plant is male to a different plant is female and so on throughout the population. And that way I can maintain the genetic diversity of the population I'm trying to keep. Pollen doesn't last forever so uh, we want to move it right along. I've brought a bag inside and what you can see if you look in is a lot of anthers that have broken and fallen off the tassel and also the pollen. This is what we're going to take and deliver to the silks of another plant. You wouldn't actually want to be doing this out in the field so uh, don't play with the bags while you're out there. This is a demonstration only. Here you can see a silk bag that I bent over the night before to indicate that I had trimmed the silks. This is the one I'm going to now take and apply this pollen to and this is the most secure way I know of applying the pollen. We we'll take this tassel bag, now it's folded over. Most of the pollen is down here at this end of the bag. And what I'm going to do is open up the end a little bit here so that I can get it over this ear. And I'm going to grab this bag and get this one over it as quickly as I possibly can, uh, you know, purely for biosecurity here. I want to make sure I know that this pollen is the only pollen going on this ear. So I'm going to go something like this and it's covered right away and we're not worried about any other pollen blowing onto those silks and then I'm going to pick up this bag and snap it to spread the pollen onto it like so. Now that ear is pollinated. So how do we get this bag to stay put? I'm going to wrap the ends of it around the back of the stalk like so and I'm going to take out my stapler and I'm going to staple it loosely right there so the bag is fairly loose so as the ear grows the bag will stay with it and we'll leave this here throughout the season taking the bag off uh, when we harvest this is the, the ear. This the ear I just pollinated and you can see that I have its tassel covered. Now in the classic chain sibbing technique what I'm going to do now is take this pollen and put it on a different plant from the one which I had gotten this pollen so that I'm chaining pollen from one plant to another. So each plant is actually crossed with uh, two other plants, a different male and then a different female.